Developing a game is a lot like developing a little squishy Metroid amiibo. First of all, you need a good base, a good foundation to build upon. Then, you need to be able to think outside of the box, outside of the canister. And lastly, you need to be flexible. You need a squishy top so that if any changes arise, you can bend with those changes. Now today we learned that Metroid Prime 4, this little base down here, it's crumbling out from underneath it unfortunately. It's not holding up anymore. But luckily for Nintendo, they have a little squishy Metroid amiibo attached to their head and they're ready for that flexible change that they needed to make. Now, for those of you who are wondering why I'm talking about a little squishy Metroid amiibo today, basically we got some news that Metroid Prime 4, it's been scrapped. They're starting again from scratch with this game um, and they're being now spearheaded by Retro. They're taking over the project. So yes, it's not all bad news. And I kind of want to get into that a little bit because you might notice that I'm not exactly all doom and gloom about this because I think it's actually good news. To me, in my head, I'm trying to put out the fact that N Nintendo even announced this in the first place. I'm trying to just pretend that, you know what? Today we didn't get a, a Metroid project that was scrapped. We got a Metroid project announced to be made by Retro. And that's exciting. So what I actually want to do today, because I am so late to be talking about this, uh, it's because I'm Australian, and the news popped at like 1 o'clock last night, and I was just finishing putting up the other video, I'm like, nope, this, this is definitely going to wait, and I figured, you know what, today, I'm just going to plan a better quality video, um, and that way you guys have something that's better quality, and I didn't just rush up at midnight last night and, and try to put it up then, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump through just five of the quotes from this interview. I'm also going to link the interview in case you haven't heard it and you have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm going to link it down below in the description. But I'm just going to jump through five quotes that I found interesting in the interview and dissect them a little bit and just create a bit of discussion around them because there's a little bit of discussion to have here. All right, let's stop tiptoeing around the bush and actually get into it. So first quote that we have here from Takahashi is, this change will essentially mean restarting development from the beginning. That is huge. That means they have literally scrapped basically everything they have and they're going to go from the ground up with Retro. I think it makes sense though. Like from what we've heard and from what rumors are coming out after this is that Retro brought an idea to Nintendo. They have their own idea and simply trying to like fuse that with the other person's or other, like one person made it, the, the other team's idea. I don't think that would work. I think this is a much better option for them. The strange thing here is though, this means they've had like one to two years of development that they've just been pouring into this and they're just going to throw that away. That's gone. That, that's, that's no more. It's a huge waste of resources. But I think the reason this happened is because they announced it in the first place. Since they announced it like a year and a half ago now, I feel like there was a certain reluctancy to actually just scrap it and say no more. We, do, we don't want to touch this anymore. We'll just start again from the start. Because I feel like they have, they, they set their own expectation that we need to release this to people. So don't, so don't let this go. Keep trying, keep pushing. I know that I do the same if I start a project and I've, I've announced that, let's say I'm talking about Metro Prime and I said to everyone on Twitter or something like that, hey, I'm going to talk about Metro Prime. I'm very reluctant to let go of that project once I know people have an expectation there because I feel like people are waiting for that. Where if I just start a project and no one knows about it, get rid of it if it's not working. That's as simple as that. And so like this kind of thing always happens in game development. There's lots of projects that get scrapped, but I feel like there was a reluctancy with this one. And also, I don't want you to think that Nintendo, it takes this lightly. This is a big deal for them. Like this is heartbreaking to, uh, to, to Metroid fans. fans friends around the world. It's just absolutely heartbreaking. But to Nintendo, that they poured a lot of time and development into this, it's got to be even worse. And like, you know, just to go back to myself again, because, you know, let's just talk about me this entire time. <sighs> Sorry, but it's the easiest comparison for me to make. If I spend a day on a project and I get rid of it at the end of that day, after I've like, I've put uh, so much effort, like a whole day of effort into it, I beat the crap out of myself that night. I'm like, Eric, come on, man, get it together. Like, I just beat myself up. Now, imagine, imagine imagine doing that for like a year and a year and a half. Imagine the individuals that actually put this project together, that built it, that now said, all that work that you guys did, it's gone. I feel bad for them. I feel sorry for those people who put all that effort into there, really. We, we are still going to eventually get the Metroid Prime game that we want, and, and better now, it's retro. Um, assumingly, like, that's an assumption, obviously. But those people there, the people that are behind this, and, and Nintendo included, and, the, and, the, and even the higher ups there, you gotta feel sorry for them. And you could tell how much they cared about this project. The way they came out, the way Takahashi came out, it was just kind of, you could almost feel it was pouring out of his heart saying that we have to let this project go, that we have to let this down. 
and we have to start again. You could feel it out of that. And I think that's why this almost went together so well. And we'll get into it later, like about everything. But like, to me, you, it had heart in there. It certainly had heart. All right, let's move on to the next quote here, where Takahashi says, it has not reached the standards we seek in a sequel to the Metroid Prime series. I'd love to be a fly on the wall just to be a part of these, see these conversations and see what, see what actually happened to this. Um, but yeah, let's go into the standards a little bit there because standards can be a bit of a funny thing. So for a start, let's, let's think about Metroid Prime Federation Force. They released this game. Um, is that the standard that they set? Was it below that standard? Now, I don't believe so. I, I believe they set a higher bar for their um, one that was a spin-off, a, a lower bar for their spin-offs. Uh, and two, I don't think they were like that fast with the project. And three, I didn't even play that. So I can't actually quote like myself on that and say I thought it was bad because I don't have an idea. But I, I feel like the, the main core series of the Metroid Prime series, that they set a really high bar for it now. And they're saying we have to reach that bar. And that's what it wasn't reaching. I don't think it's like, yeah, <laughs> not reaching Federation Force levels. So then it also begs the question, what standard wasn't it meeting? Was it like the gameplay that it wasn't meeting? Or was it the art direction? Um, or, or maybe it was just like, it wasn't going as fast as it needed to go. Maybe this project was going along rather slowly and they needed to speed it up. I don't think it's that last one there because, it, well, you know, they would probably continue the project with Retro then or someone else that they wouldn't just scrap it completely. Um, however, like, it's definitely gonna be like something to do with the direction of the game. And it'd be something that I'd just, I'd love to see the build of this game, kind of see what, what, what stages they get to? What did it look like? It's those type of things that you would, it would one day just love an inside look at this stuff. And I don't know whether we'll ever get that, but I would love to see like, not just this, just all the Nintendo scrap projects, but this one in particular, just to see what stage they were like, we cut it off here. This is where we say no more. And I also assume that this is why they've, they've been sitting on this, this Metroid Prime egg for so long, just waiting for it to hatch because, um, or waiting for an idea to hatch because they didn't have an idea. They didn't have, somewhere that this could go a direction. And I feel like that's the reason this project maybe failed in the first place, is it didn't have a someone spearheading that direction and saying, this is where it needs to go. And by the sounds of it, that's what Retro is coming to do. They've come in to say, no guys, this is where Metro needs to go. All right, next quote. Tanabe says, we deeply understand the high anticipation Metro Prime fans have for this game. So why do they choose this quote? Well, it's got part of the reason to do with like, Metroid Prime fans in general is something to me that like they're a, a really strong kind of vocal fan base and we'll get into that in a second but I also feel like this quote was targeted directly at Metroid Prime fans obviously it was it says it in the quote but it's like I think they understand that on a level now themselves as well these aren't just Nintendo fans they're directing with this these are Metroid Prime fans and Metroid Prime itself is a fan driven series it's driven by fans. It's, to me, I compare it to, but on a lesser scale, games like Xenoblade, uh, even games like Dragon Quest and stuff like that. These games, they don't sell in the massive numbers. They do well, but not in the huge numbers. But their fan base, they're out there and they're known. You always hear about these games because the fans love them so much. They create passion, these games. Um, it's just a shame they don't sell better. But I think that's got to do a little bit with just the way the games are. You think about Mario. Mario is so accessible, anyone and their grandma and their mother can jump into Mario. But you hand your, your mother a, a, a blaster in, in Metroid, and she's probably gonna struggle. But shout out to the mums who don't. Like, you guys, you're killing it at the moment. The one thing I wish for this series and all these series that have these, these really passionate fan bases is that their sales translate to the passion and, and to, the, to the vo how vocal they are. Because, like, you can instantly see that anything with Metroid's name in it right up now, Comments, 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 comments. Everyone is talking about it because everyone loves to talk about these games as gamers. The, the gamers, the hardcore, the people who love these sorts of games are the vocal people. And that's why you see comments on this and that's why you don't see them as much on like, you still see them hate, but like not as much on, as, uh, I guess, a passion behind like Mario and, and Donkey Kong you do actually. But anyway, point taken. All right, second to last quote we have here. So they talk about having Tanabe collaborating and developing with Retro Studios. We believe we can make games something that will meet our fans' expectations. Now, I bring up this one because the big conversation around retro at the moment 
is um, one, like everyone's excited that they're doing this game, but two, every time you see someone excited about it, I see another person in the comments section jumping at them saying they're not the same retro anymore. And like that is, that's completely true. Like sure, like n development changes, people come and go, of course it's not the same retro anymore, but this is as close as we're ever gonna get. Does it guarantee anything? No, and I feel really bad for retro at the moment. I feel really sorry for them because they're just being posted as the golden child. They can't do wrong um, and they do great stuff. But the pressure that comes behind that to do, to keep doing good stuff is a lot. And they have a lot of pressure and a lot of people breathing down their necks at the moment um, and waiting for their next big thing and waiting for this now. Um, and actually that brings up another good point. People have been wondering what Retro have been doing. Like what have they been doing for all this time? We still don't know, we still got no idea. Um, but like, it's, it's always possible. Like we're all expecting a project to come out of this. I see a lot of people talking about that racing one, uh, the FX Grand Prix, whatever. Um, but it's also possible they might not have even been doing a project. They might have just been going around and jumping from ship to ship, making sure everything is sailing in the right direction. There's no guarantee that, that they're masting their own sail and sailing to their own beat. More ship puns. Speaking of keeping the ship sailing, let's move on to the last one here uh, where Takahashi says, I'd like to extend my deepest and heartfelt apologies to everyone that the launch will be delayed. This is the last one that I wanted to mention because I kind of covered it a little bit at the start but you could feel through this three minute video that they cared, that they felt like they, that they needed to do this. And they did, like it was, it was really good of them. They could have just come out with a press release. They could have just said nothing at all and just continued development. It could have just been radio silence from here on out. But they came out and they told us all exactly what was going on. And I think that's why this has gone down so well, is that they were open and honest and didn't just say, all right, no, just continue waiting. Let's just have this radio silence here. Um, and, and like, hats off to them for that. I think that's why that, 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 that have this positive reception. And that's certainly why I'm positive about this. Now, for last comments here. The first thing is, we don't have a direct deal, obviously. And I think one of the biggest questions here is, was like, has this news got anything to do with the delay of the, of the direct itself? Like, have they been waiting and, and biding their time to be like, we've got to get this news out there. If we're going to cancel it, we've got to let them know that we're canceling it before we go and show our lineup for the year. We don't want this to, to put a big gray cloud over the top. We want to just be able to sail through without any rain. So it does make me wonder now, are they ready to give us the good news? Are they ready to shower us with some new games coming out? At any time now, are we going to get a direct? I mean, we have to anyway, but like, surely that, 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 that this is out of the way now? They're ready. And I feel like that's got to be the case. Also some rumors came out of this about um, what the problem was, the, the Prime Trilogy being done and the more stuff that's supposed to be coming. And I'm not really gonna talk about them today because one, the, the, the Prime Trilogy, everyone's kind of harped on about that enough. We all know about that. Um, there's not much more to say, like surely that's gonna be coming soon, but like if that is done and if that even is a thing, it's still a rumor. Um, but yeah, I feel like we've harped on about that enough. And then as far as the rumors themselves, I don't feel like there's enough ground or base there. So I'm not really gonna dive into them at all. I, I think that's kind of, Got to do it for today. I'd love to hear from some of the guys that are, are girls, <laughs> that are really big Metroid fans. Uh, and, and just let me know what you think about all this kind of Metroid news. Are, are, does this impress you? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you disappointed? Are you all of the above? Let me know. <laughs> and remember, for great Nintendo Entertainment, you can count on me. It is currently the day of Australia, more commonly known as Australia Day. And um, I've been so consumed with my work that I forgot that it was coming up and I have no snags to put in the barbecue. I have nothing going on for Australia Day. And someone is letting off fireworks outside, which is exciting for them. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty un-Australian right now. <laughs> and um, 